How many times have you seen a movie or a film that has that perfect happy ending where two or more characters are united or reunited after a giant falling out? Or the movie with the wedding or the big event? For a moment, those kinds of endings leave you so satisfied. You think to yourself, "Woo! thank goodness, I am so happy for them. What a great wedding. I want mine just to be like that. What a relief. Well, if I'm going to be honest, I prefer to watch movies that leave me with a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end, or a good book that doesn't really reveal what's going to happen next, an ending that leaves the spectator or the reader wondering. The movie that always comes to mind here is Inception. If you haven't seen the movie, plug your ears for the next 30 seconds because I'm going to ruin it for you. You never really find out if Leonardo DiCaprio comes out of the coma dream with a toy. You can listen again. You're left in suspense. I love these kinds of movies because they always lead to conversations with friends and family. Everyone theorizes their ending and tries to convince the other one while they're kind of digesting it themselves. And the reason that these endings are so stirring is because that's what real life is like. Our lives are cliffhangers after cliffhangers. We don't know what's going to happen next. We graduate elementary school, which is one ending. We start junior high another beginning. We leave one job, we start another, end the job, start a new job, move from one home, go to another home. The cycle continues and continues, and one ending leads to another beginning. Our tradition has a blessing that helps us go through or deal with endings. You don't say it at the end of movies, just to be clear, but you say them at the long of an end of a personal journey. And this blessing is called Birkat Hagomel. And I'm guessing that not everybody is familiar with this blessing since we don't recite it too, too often. It's usually recited at the conclusion of a difficult situation. It is said after recovering from a serious illness or surviving a dangerous journey. And the blessing reads like this. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Hagomel lachayavim tovot shegamaleni kol tov, which means, blessed is God who grants us with greatness and with all that is good. We're not used to reciting this kind of prayer. It's kind of the flip side or the culmination of the Mishaberach, the prayer for healing, which is sometimes recited for weeks, months, sometimes even years when a person battles a serious illness. And when that finally, that person finally recovers, we mark that moment with birkat hagomel. This blessing is an opportunity to express gratitude for the miracle of healing and for the full restoration of life itself. But what is so compelling about this blessing is that it makes no mention of overcoming terrible illness or battling challenging occurrences. It's a blessing that thanks God for granting us goodness. This idea of goodness makes us think of restoring our balance, helping us reach a sort of equilibrium or a steadiness. There's something to say about truly understanding what good or great feels like when you have felt difficult pain. When we return to goodness, we separate ourselves from the previous distress of before. I bring this prayer to you today on Rosh Hashanah because like many of you, I'm wondering when we can say Birkat HaGomel for the end of COVID. Is it when we all got vaccinated? Is it when there's no more hospitalizations? Or is it when life goes back to normal, whatever that is. Birkata Gomel is discussed in our Talmud at length. And it states that four people are obligated to say Birkata Gomel. And these people are 
one who is freed from jail, one who is sick and is now healed, one who has traveled at sea, and one who has traveled in the desert. In some ways, it feels like COVID has made us go through all four of these things. Freed us from jail is the isolation and separation we've endured from each other and gathering with one another. Healing from a sickness as we've watched so many around us fall ill to this terrible disease and others. And traveling back from sea or desert, well, metaphorically speaking, every day feels like a wave of uncertainty with the constant changes and adjustments we have to make in our lives, wearing our masks, socially distancing, which are the least of the issues. It's been very difficult to find stability and calm. So I raise the question again, when can we say Birkat Gomel for COVID? I'd like to suggest that we can recite this blessing more often than we think we can. It may seem that coming home after traveling at sea or in a desert is conclusive enough to recite the blessing like our Talmud states, but the truth is it's not the only time we can do it. When we watch the kind of movies that I described to you earlier, the ones with the neat bow tie at the end and everything works out wonderfully, that's not the real ending of a story. Take The Little Mermaid, for instance. I'm gonna ruin that film for you as well. <laughs> and I don't mean the Disney version, the original, very, very sad. I'm not gonna talk about that one. The Little Mermaid ends with Ariel and Eric having a beautiful wedding, we all remember. But was that really the ending? I think not. The movie ends in one place that leaves us hanging, the wedding. But many questions arise. Where would they live? Ocean? Land? Would King Triton ever get to see his grandkids? Ariel was 16 when she got married in this film. That's pretty young. So does she and Eric end up in couples therapy because of their differences? With Eric's job at sea, does Ariella have time to travel with him or will she be able to go to college and have a career of her own? I apologize that I have ruined this for you for life. But the point is, it's just one ending. There is so much more of their story to unfold and the same is true of our lives. None of you live in the ocean so you don't have the same issues, however, You've had your own struggles and hurdles that you have dealt with that deserve to be acknowledged and need to be recognized in order to give you strength to move forward to the next obstacle. Our lives are complex with new endings and beginnings that occur all the time. This means that we have the perpetual opportunity to recite Birkat Agomel when we're ready to move forward to the next chapter in our lives. The wonderful thing about this blessing is that it helps us distinguish and appreciate our accomplishments that inspire us to build on our success in order to gain more strength, positivity, and endurance, and to face difficulty in the future. And Rosh Hashanah is all about new beginnings as individuals and as a community. We get to look back at our past year and learn from it so we can grow in years to come. And in the past 18 months, COVID has hit everyone on planet Earth. And we are trying to get through difficult moments each day in ways we've never had to do before. So in the coming year, I'd like to invite you to offer yourself the gift of reciting this prayer so you can strengthen your fortitude and become more resilient for the trials to come. So at this time, I'd like us to all just take one very short moment and think about one thing that you've overcome in the past 18 months that really genuinely feels like a step forward 
so that I may recite the Birkat Agomel with you this evening and we can share in this moment. I hope you have something in your heart. If not, I invite you to think about it later this evening. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hagomel lachayavim tovot, shegamaleini kol tov. Blessed is God who grants us with greatness and with all that is good. Please know that your temple family is always walking beside you and is here for you with each of your new endings and beginnings. I wish you all a sweet and joyful ending and beginning this Rosh Hashanah, Shana Tova.